So in the last video we talked about binary as a base two numbering system and the fact that every computer needs to have all its data in binary. So this video is going to be about converting numbers to binary, so to and from decimal to binary. And we talked about units as well. So this question is quite convoluted, but we're asked to give a binary equivalent of a denary number seven and express it as a nibble in unsigned binary. A lot of this stuff you may not really understand. I've deliberately done it convoluted so you basically just to so you can experience it. But it's a very simple answer, we just need to give 7 in binary. So the way I do this is I do a table, so we talked about how with base or with place value of denary or decimal we have 10 to the power 0, 10 to the power 1 and so on with our columns in our table, our place value table. So I do the same with binary, so we have a base 2 in this case, so 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3 and 2 to the power 4. In fact no, that's gone too far, we only need to do 4 because we have a nibble here. We're doing a nibble, so we need four bits. And then we can convert this to the actual columns. So 2 to the power 0 is 1, 2 to the power 1 is 2, 2 to the power 2 is 4, and 2 to the power 3 is 8. So you can see the column headings double each time. And we can draw a little table here. So 7 is our kind of target number. That's what we're converting. So what we do is we look at a column. We look at the last column we're dealing with. And we go, does that column go into our number? So does 8 go into 7? It doesn't. So we write down to 0. Does 4 go into 7? It goes in once. That's all interesting. Either it goes in or it doesn't, so either one or zero. And what's the remainder when four, when uh, seven divided by four, or well, the remainder is three? So we can kind of get rid of this now. Then we're dealing with three. So does two go into three? Yeah, it goes in once. Remainder one. And then does one go into one? Yeah, of course it does. So uh, that's it with no remainder left over. So this is seven in binary. If we just tidy this up, and you can check just by adding up the columns. So we've got zero lots of eight, one lot of four. 1 lot of 2 and 1 lot of 1, 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals 7, so this is correct. And an and the only really important bit here is we've got a leading 0, this doesn't mean anything, this could just be these three numbers, but we're asked to give it as a nibble, so it's really important we do leave in the leading 0. Let's now do a second example, which is much larger, 212, and often we write down the base as a little um, suffix, so the base is often shown, so if it was binary we could do a little base 2 here. Um, just to make it easier to look at. So, uh, so 212. So we need to do our column headings. So uh, I know from experience this is going to be 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. This is a byte. And this is as far as you're going to get an exam. You're not going to get a larger number than this. Um, we're doing with 212 here. So the next column is 256. You can see the columns double each time, as I say. But we know that 256 isn't going to go into 212, so we might as well ignore it. If we aren't asked to put it in any particular form, we can kind of just leave off the lean zeros. So 128 goes into 212 once, and then we've got to find the remainder. So the difference between 212 and 128 is going to be 84. So we're now dealing with 84 as our number. So 64 does go into 84 once, easy remainder this time, we've got 20. 32 does not go into 20, so you write down to 0. 16 does go into 20 once, remainder 4. That was the worst 4. <laughs> uh, 8 doesn't go into 4. 4 does go into 4, and then we've got no remainder left over, so the last two columns get put as 0. These, these aren't leading zeros, these do matter. But this this doesn't actually matter for our calculation. Uh, so, there we are. So that is our number. And as I said in the last video, often we leave a little gap in between each nibble when we're dealing with a byte. And a byte is pretty much what we're using most of the time. Okay, now to do the reverse process of what we just did, so going from binary to decimal, we're given 1111 1, 1, 1 in base 2, I'm going to put it in decimal, so we can just do this very quickly, but let's just talk you through it first. So if we do a table again, 1, 2, 4, 8, it's a nibble, so 4 bits, and then we can uh, fill in, so you can see I've given up to the table below, so 1, 1, 1, 1, and what we're doing is basically multiplying the values here by up here. And this math is more, it seems a bit arbitrary to do it with 1 because um, it's just the same as 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 but this matters when we're going to do hexadecimal next. But basically we just add up each one so 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 2 is 14 plus 1 is 15 and this is the maximum, this is a good point to just say this is the maximum you can get with 4 bits. Obviously you can't get any more than this, uh, just all 1's in your binary number. So the way you can work out the combinations is by going, it's not a very appealing colour but 2 to the power however many bits you've got, so 2 to the power 4 is 16, so we can represent with 16 we can represent with 16 combinations or 4 bits uh, 0 through to 15, so this could be all zeros all the way up to all 1's which is giving us 15. 
So when you want to work at combinations, this is the base and this is however many bits you've got to work with. So for a second example, it's very slightly harder. We've got a gap here. This isn't two separate numbers. This is representing one binary number, as I say. And uh, filled in the table as usual, making sure you line it up with your columns. And then this is the same as going 0 lot 128, 0 lot 64, and then 1 lot 32. So basically 32 plus 16. We skip these two and then plus two and then no lots of one. So 32 plus 16, 48 plus two is 50. And that's our answer. So 15 in base 10, 50 in base 10 as our two answers. People put a lot of emphasis on this topic in computer science exams. In reality, it's probably only going to be worth maybe four marks maximum in two separate questions. That's usually all you're going to get on this topic. So really important you can do it, but not worth stressing that much about it. This is really easy. It, it can take a while to get used to. It's very easy to practice as well. You can make up these numbers. I've made up these numbers. You can do it yourself and then Google binary decimal converter and check your answers. But it's a very logical process when you think about how it actually sort of decomposes two of the different columns. But I've known people who think this is genuinely worth 50% of the exam and it's a very small topic within the larger syllabus.